Hey ladies, welcome to another episode of the Revitalized Womanhood. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. Sorry I missed last week. We are currently in Estonia and the Wi-Fi up until this point has been pretty hit and miss. So luckily this guest was so, so kind and I canceled her because the Wi-Fi at our place in Gdansk, Poland was not great, but she was so kind to be willing to jump on with me here. We're in Estonia and I'm like, oh, the Wi-Fi is great. You got to jump on with me. So my guest today is Rebecca La Rebardier, and she is a certified sex and relationship coach. Ladies, as per usual, I love for this podcast to be something that you can just listen to in your car. It doesn't matter if the kiddos are in there. I try to be very sure that if there is something that they do not need to hear or you do not want them hearing, that I put a disclaimer on the intro. So. This is obviously going to be one of those episodes, but you are not going to want to miss it. So not only do I get into some thoughts and background to some things that I wanted to discuss with her, because she is also, let me, let me bring this up to speed. She is also from the purity culture, right? She was raised in the purity culture and this is what she does. Her husband was actually before they met and when they met, uh, pastor. So, you know, she was a youth leader and the husband before they met, when they met was a pastor and she wanted to be a missionary. You know, she was raised in this culture and she wraps it up at the end of this episode so well and talks about, I said, why, what's your why behind this? And she said, because I felt like I was lied to. And when that happened, I felt like if I was lied to, then everybody's being lied to feeling like, when we get married, it's going to be when you, when you've done everything right in the purity culture, you've never you've never done anything quote unquote wrong, right? You've waited for the guy, you've you've had this guy be your first everything, right? And then so when you get married, your wedding night should be like all of the fireworks and bells going off and everything it should be, right? It should be so blessed and so amazing. Well, guess what? That's not what it is. In in I don't know if that was your case. Good for you. Congratulations. But in most cases, that is not what it's all about. So she said, I wanted to look into this. I wanted to research it. And so she says, I went back to the most liberal college you could possibly find because I knew what I knew and I wanted to know what they knew. And then I figured out what I wanted to continue to teach and put out into the universe, right? Um, from from all of that have once i had all the all the information i knew what i wanted to share so i am so excited about this episode not only do i get to talk to her about some things that i i i have some feelings about but i reached out to you may have answered a question or or i sorry you may have asked a question i reached out to my instagram to my women's community to my facebook group i reached out to all of you and said what are the questions you want answered what do you want to know? We have her here. She is the expert. What would you like to know? And we answered them. We, I gave her, I didn't get through all of them. I, I had a few, but the list was so long. Maybe we'll have to do a part two. Maybe we'll do this again because it was so good. You guys, the information in this episode is amazing. So sit back, enjoy, unless you're in the car with your kiddos, turn it off and listen to it at another time. <laughs> But don't forget to come back. You're not going to want to miss it. Here is my episode with Rebecca La Robardier. Hi, Rebecca. Welcome to the Revitalized Womanhood podcast. I'm so excited to have you here because as we were just discussing, we'll let our listeners in, is we were supposed to record about a week ago when I was in another city somewhere and the Wi-Fi was very subpar, was not about to let it happen. Oh, it was Gdansk, Poland. So, Gdansk, beautiful city, Wi-Fi, horrible, but Good to know. they made up for it in every other way. So, thank you so much for being with, coming back on with me and being able to work with my schedule. That's so sweet of you. And oh, my Rebecca, pleasure. Rebecca, look, I've been practicing La Rebardier. Yeah. Did I nail it? Okay. It, yes. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm like, that's French. I've been in France for about a month total, so I should be able to pronounce this. You've been there longer than I've been. I've never been there yet. 
I'm so excited for this conversation. And I think my listeners have no idea what's coming because we are about to talk about sex, baby. Like, seriously, (laughs) I'm, it's funny because I start talking about this stuff and in my mind, I'm like, I'm not a prude. But then I start talking about it or start thinking, what do I need to edit myself as? What do I need to be careful with? And I'm like, wait a minute, maybe I am a prude. Like maybe I kind of am (laughs) at heart. Yeah. Well, it could be a prude or it could just be it's uncharted territory and it's not the most familiar thing to talk about. And so you're like, am I allowed to say this? Am I not allowed to say this? Oh, my so. God. That was that was definitely more eloquent than what I was saying. Would you please let's just get right out to this and introduce yourself to my listeners. And I am so excited for what we have for them today. So I'm Rebecca LaRobardier, a certified sex and relationship coach, a certified sex educator, and a somatic experiencing trainer and a practitioner in training. Um, And they all work hand in hand. And I started doing this unofficially 19 years ago um, when I got married because I grew up in the purity culture and it backfired. It wasn't what I had been promised. And so I was like, I've got to solve this for me and anyone else that will listen. So that's my unofficial start. And then officially got my certifications in 2018 when our youngest child went to school. I went to school and so we all did homework together. It's not as romantic as it sounds. (laughs) You were learning about sex while covering your pages, avoiding (laughs) eyes. Like you do keep your eyes on. This is a whole new level of keep your eyes on your your book. This one's mine. (laughs) I love it so much. And I love that you jumped in and talked about that you were raised in purity culture because I myself was as well. I'm LDS. I'm not Mm -hmm. active, but I was raised totally LDS, submerged Mm -hmm. in it. I, I joke, but it's not a joke that I was the first person in a very long line to not be married in the temple in the LDS temple. Okay. So I, so that's what I mean when I, I've never felt like I was a prude or anything like that, but yes, you said it perfectly that maybe it's just not that we're not comfortable talking about it in the ways, or we've never been given permission to talk about it in the right ways. Yeah. Um, and that is, I actually don't know if you're ready for this bomb for me to drop on you because, okay. Let me, set I'm ready. I'm ready. Let me set this up for you. So LDS family, my sweet mother, and um, she has eight kids. And um, they're very, very, very religious. Okay. I love them for that. That's great. I Absolutely. have never been that way. And, and I've always, I do feel like, and not that this is their fault or it's mine, but that I was like the shame like of that for that reason. Right. But anyway, so I I have a good relationship with my mom. Now I've, we've gotten past all those things. And we were actually out on a walk um, before we left. And I said, mom, and this is the first time I've ever felt comfortable enough to even say anything to my mom, because any other time we've ever brought up any kind of other religious discussion, it always feels like she gets very upset. She's the sweetest. Oh my gosh. She's just the sweetest, but she feels attacked by me because I am a very aggressive three you know, okay. you can, you can yeah. talk Enneagram and <laughs> she can talk Enneagram. not, she's probably the sweetest, most mild two on the planet, you know? Got and it. so anytime we talk about anything, it does come probably across as me attacking her views and her, mm-hmm. what she loves and believes, whatever, when really it's yeah. not me attacking it. So this was interesting for me. We were on this walk and I said, mom, because of this whole revitalized womanhood, revitalized sisterhood that I'm doing, I've actually opened doors into wanting to walk through revitalized young womanhood, get to where the source, the root of the problem is. And I believe that's 11, 10, 11, 12 year old girls, right? And so I started asking her questions and I says, okay, well, this is going to be a hard one for me to ask. And I'm not trying to be offensive at all, but tell me this, how am I wrong to think that in our our religion, which would be all the purity religions, all the purity mm-hmm. culture, in our religion, basically you're brainwashed as a woman to think sex is bad, 
sex is Im- immoral. It, it's impure. You're a bad person. You're going to go to hell. You are a disgrace. You are a slut. You are this, that, the other. I mean, the shaming is like next yes. level, right? Yep. So then all of a sudden on your wedding night, <laughs> it's supposed to be gates are open. I am a sexual queen. I know everything about everything. My body yeah. is your temple. Like have me right. Yep. And on the opposite side of that, we all know the yeah. truth, right? Yes. I, I mean, my mother-in-law just got done telling me I had said something similar about this. I think I was reading these questions to her because she's part of the sisterhood as well. And oh, cool. she said, I remember on my wedding night that I hid in the bathroom because the only information I had was from a girlfriend and she was trying to help me through it, whatever. And she says, I remember hiding in the bathroom. I was so scared. And I'm like, yeah, I I hear a lot of stories. I hear a lot of stories. And even though I myself am not active in that religion anymore, right? And I am more worldly, I guess we would say, but I have heard some horror stories from my my college roommates or like my sisters that did get married in the temple or whatever. And I'm like, this cannot be how we continue. Yeah. Yeah. It it's a doozy. It's yes, I do I do think brainwashing is a great way to put it. Um, because it is all about fear and control. And as they, as long as they can control a woman's sexuality, then they can control the woman. And it is very detrimental not only to the women, but also to the men, because they're fed this whole thing also that if our wife does everything right, you know. Blah, blah, blah. All these things. And we're going to have an amazing sex life. And she's going to want to have sex with me all the time. Right. Right? And if you're raised in the purity culture, and this is a little harsh, extreme. Okay? So you're raised. We have to be modest to keep boys pure because they can't control themselves. So in a sense, men, boys are animals. Right? Because they have no control over themselves or their sexuality. And so it is my job as a woman to control them because they can't control themselves. And now I'm supposed to get married and then on my wedding night, give myself to this animal who can't control himself. So there's like layers of it's not safe, even though in my head I know he's safe, but I've never been allowed to be aware of my body and what it's really telling me. And so all my body's saying is he's not safe. I'm going to shut down. And now he's disappointed and I've already failed on my wedding night as a wife. That's a great start. Wow. You, that's so true. You broke it down so well because that is true as, as, as obviously me, a woman, I don't Mm -hmm. think about the other side of that, but that did just bring up a lot of things from my childhood and my youth of they can't control themselves. We have Mm -hmm. to keep ourselves this way because they can't control themselves or we don't want to put those thoughts in their heads, you know, that kind of thing. And that's so interesting. Wow, that just came back uh, from my youth. Thank you for that. You just opened that what? candle. Sorry. Box. Thank you. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It's no. not a bad thing. But but that's you true. wanted I to go back there anyway. So back. there it is. Let's go back there. So poor Gina. Let's go back and help mm. her. Poor little Gina. But yeah. So I, I. How do we? How do we go forward in changing this? How do we go forward in renewing a dialogue where it's not looked at as uh, immoral, immodest, Mm -hmm. right? We're not pushing porn here. We need to talk about these things. We need to help these girls understand that. Um, and men, they need to handle that themselves because I'm not here to talk to the men. They can figure it out themselves. <laughs> They've been hand fed everything for the, like all of time. So no, but for women. So that's again, why I feel so, so strongly that I really, really want to start something as far as revitalize young womanhood, but because mm-hmm. all of these lessons that I am now talking to groups of women who are between the ages of 20 to 76. Yeah. And and I'm shocked that so a perfect example of this is we had one of our calls and we talked about I said, you guys, listen, I don't have it in me to prepare a whole thing this week. Can you just let all the different squad leaders come to me and bring to the table what one of the hot topics in your squad was this week? Like, I want to hear what what the 
big discussion was. And in two of them was creating good boundaries. And I thought to myself after that, I thought, here we are, I'm 41, right? And these are pretty much around similar ages. We'll say we only have the one 20 year old, but we've got mostly like 30s, 40s, 50s, up to 76, right? And I'm like, yeah, we are grown women who do not still do not know how to have strong, good boundaries and respect ourselves and love ourselves enough to eliminate said toxic properties that are affecting us. Right. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. this is something we should have nailed by the time we're 20. I will give you till you're 20. I mean, by 17, I would hope 15 even, but nailed it. I've figured out life in, in regards to boundaries by 20. And that's just not the case. So we need to do better. We need to do better about training this next group of women coming in. So for you, where does that start? Because I know a lot of you and your coaching is probably women my age and your age and our age and like that have already all this trauma and baggage and how do I get past this, right? But how do we start with this younger generation and have it not be? Not have them have to go through what we did? Yeah. And also in a way that's, that's safe and comfortable and not flashing neon triple X signs, right? Not, not walking around with a chip on their shoulder, but embracing who they are and actually knowing who they are and what they want, what their preferences are. But we've been socially and culturally conditioned to disregard our body and to live in our head as women kind of as a culture, but okay, we're talking to women. So starting at a young age, we weren't allowed to have boundaries. We weren't allowed to say no to our parents, right? You go to church or the temple and you probably had to say hello or give everybody a hug that your parents told you. And there's this creepy man. My body doesn't want to hug him, but I can't disrespect a man, right? And so automatically we are told not to trust our body and to do what is socially acceptable as opposed to actually being present in our body, right? And so it's ingrained in us to not take care of ourselves, right? And so the more we can encourage our children, those children around us, like, okay, you don't want to even shake my hand when we meet? No problem. Like, even now I have friends that we'll hang out with And I was like, I don't feel like giving you a hug. And so I don't. And then if we have good conversations and I feel connected enough, I'll give them a goodbye hug. But I get to, and that's taken time. But it's allowing myself to have the opportunity to trust myself, to be present again within my body and not worried about, okay, who's going to be mad at me? Because it is, it's, it is a social construct that we grew up in. As women, we're supposed to be beautiful, but not too beautiful. We're supposed to be kind and not bossy. We can't control. We can't be overzealous. We can't be too passionate, but we can't be a dud, right? And right. so there's all of these things that we have to live here. And that is part of why there are so many health issues in women today, because We aren't in touch with our bodies and we don't allow ourselves to truly be us, which is part of what I love about your whole platform. It's like, we get to be like, we get to be a revitalized woman. And for us, our ages, we didn't have the forerunners ahead of us. Like they were raised by a lot of our parents were raised by farmers or people that like hard labor and there were very distinct roles, but there wasn't the dishwasher. There wasn't all of the extras that we now have. And so we've taken on the responsibilities of our grandmas and working 40 hours and doing all this and trying to be the same as a man. And we're not going to be like, we are different than men. And so as long as men is our standard, we will always fall short. But if we can say this is what a woman is supposed to look like or gets to look like, we will measure up. And then we won't be defensive and walking around with a chip on our shoulder because we have to be able to work in a man's world 
No, it's just as much our world. Right. We just have to be confident in who we are to be able to walk into it. That's so interesting that you just brought up that concept. I had another guest on and I love her dearly. And she brought up the same concept. She's like, we're constantly, this is our bar, right? Mm -hmm. It's the man's bar. This is our bar. And as women, we're constantly trying. And it's like, we can't get no. there because A, we're not men. Exactly. I mean, hello, <laughs> first of all, there doesn't need to be anything else. We're not men. Yeah. And but, so why? Why are we, this is not the bar. This is the bar. I love that. That's so, that's because it's such a good concept. And so that's why it's, we're hearing it again, folks. We're hearing it again. <laughs> um, so I love, uh, I, I heard you talking and I could not agree more. You were on a podcast episode and I'm sorry, I can't, I can't remember the, the host name now, but you guys, you were talking about how um, your sex life evolves. And I could not agree with that more. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I swear. I, I'm like living in this my husband's here. I'm here. I'm here. My husband's here. I mean, and of course it's everybody. It's not just me, but, um, I first want to, I want to start with that. I think we kind of passed and that these, these folks might not know that you started as a youth counselor, right? You started as a, you what do you call it? A youth leader, right? And your mm -hmm. husband, did I hear right that he was a pastor? Yeah, he was a worship pastor and the youth pastor also. Okay, see, and so, and then you actually said in that that you wanted to serve a mission, that you thought your calling mm -hmm. was to go and serve a mission and 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 be this this <laughs> way for your life, right? Yep. So I I wanted to go back to that because I want everyone to understand that you come from this purity culture. Okay, you guys. I do. This is this is, you know, the stuff, you know, the teachings, you know, all of the, the what's in the Bible and what Jesus said and what, I what, did. you know, I, I just want to reiterate that so much that, yeah. because I don't know why in, I do know why, because it's how I was raised in my heart of hearts that we're not allowed to talk about these things because they're going to be impure or immodest mm -hmm. or, you know, you know, it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> And it's not, it's, it's not. not. And, so, and so I just, I just wanted to go back to that. But anyway, but yeah, yeah, I loved that you were talking about how sex lives evolve. And obviously, you're not the same libido when you're 20. You're not the same. I mean, right. hello, you're definitely not when you have a baby. You're definitely mm -hmm. not when you have children touching you all day all long day. and you're all touched out and and I'm mm -hmm. it's going to bring up again what you talked about being on your wedding night and feeling like already day one you're a failure as a wife mm -hmm. to exactly those same feelings that now through a lifetime through years of not being on the same page as your partner not being in the you know now you're letting him down in so many ways you're a failure you're a failure you're a failure and it's like we need to have more open discussions about why this is not failing. Mm -hmm. This is, and, and I do think, I truly think that the problem lies in communication. Absolutely. And, and one, us being able to talk about it like this on a podcast that will mm -hmm. be going out poo, all over the place and not just our close friends, but yeah. also with our partners and, and men need to understand these, these things too. I think more, there needs to be more open dialogue that's because right now I feel like the big thing with men's coaching and men's communities is first, which is great, helping with the porn, mm -hmm. the porn and the problem with porn. Yes. Great. But along with that, why did we even go to that? I mean, let's go back to your partner yeah. over here and why, what's going on over here. Right. So what advice do you have for Wow, that was way too much. I'm sorry. Where do I even begin with that? The question, opening up that dialogue with your partner when it's already so far in. I mean, I, I'll just use Rick and myself as an example because we now talk about it and stuff, but I'm not saying, but we're 17 years in. We're mm -hmm. three kids in. We are, we've been up here. We've been down here. We've been over here. We've been out here, right? And, yeah. and where do you even begin to start to have that open dialogue and that safe communication with your partner? It is, it is challenging. It it gets to a point where you're like, okay, if we didn't start with it because we weren't allowed to talk about mm -hmm. it, we just assumed like you go into marriage and you fall into these roles and it just is. And now you're both disappointed. And more often than not, 
the woman's the problem in the marriage. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So once you get through that and you start having children, like the mama bear starts coming out and the desire to just please wanes slightly. <laughs> this is the first right? child versus third <laughs> child syndrome here. And so now I'm like, okay, something's not working. And if I'm doing my work, like, and the communication's still not there and we're still hashing out the same thing. If, if the tactics we're using isn't working, let's figure out how to change it yeah. and, and find like outsource and find someone that will talk to you about it. That's willing to be like, Hey, yeah, we hit rock bottom. I don't know if I want to be with you anymore. Finally, you're being honest with yourself and each other. Now you can actually start having the dialogues. How do we build something that we actually both get to thrive? Because if you aren't honest with yourself and each other, then you're constantly protecting yourself so that you don't actually show up as yourself. And how can you allow someone to love you when you don't even love yourself because you're not even showing up as yourself, right? right? And so you have to get to that point where you're like, okay, I'm going to lay my cards out. I'm not, I'm not thriving. Are you thriving? Good. Let's figure this out. What do you actually want? Right. What can I actually give? Because until you get to that point, like, and talk about the expectations, like, I have no obligation to meet an expectation until it's spoken and then agreed upon. Like, that's where boundaries come in. Oh, I want you to do this. Cool. I'm not doing that. I don't have to. I get to if and when I want. Consent doesn't end with I do. Right. Right. And and so that's another thing that with the purity culture, we have to do, have to do whatever our husband wants. And it's not about our pleasure. It's not about how we experience life or you find the flip side and then it's like pushed. You have to have an orgasm. You have to experience this. And then it's used against us if we're not in the mood because the kids have been throwing up all day, right? Oh my gosh, well, yeah. you had an orgasm last time and you liked it. Now I don't want to because I'm not safe enough to experience the pleasure with you and it's used against me. Does that right. make sense? And so yeah. being able to just be able to be honest with yourself and each other is huge. And I know that sounds very basic. But it is one of the hardest things no. to do. No, it's not basic. It is the one of the hardest things to do because I find, and not even in sex, but every mm. part of life, I think women have a very hard time even remembering what their wants and desires yeah. and needs are because they're so used to putting everybody else's first. Like it's never been a priority. It's never been a priority, and so and and it's true. You're you're. Uh, Gosh, I think the libido just decides, shoot, she hasn't used me in a while. I'm out of here. I'm going to go on vacation. And then when you need it again, you're like trying to turn on a light switch and it's not there. But I want to go back to something you said that, that it triggered something in me is it comes down to the orgasm, but mm -hmm. also how frequently you're having sex. Because with men, we know it's like, it's a numbers game, right? I mean, Wait a minute. How do I want to? Wait a minute. <laughs> I've I've talked or had a conversation with someone else about this that women it is we get the goods, the good goods, you know? But men it's because they get the the frequency more often, right? I mean, oh, that didn't sound right. Anyway, my point is is I think a lot of women and and marriages come to that point where it's because I'm not having sex this often because mm -hmm. my wife never wants to have sex because right. blah, blah, blah. I'm, we need to get a divorce. Like right. the grass is going to be greener over here with this other lady. You know, I love the grass is greener philosophy. I'm Man. like, go ahead, honey. <laughs> yeah. Have go fun ahead. with that one. Let me know after she has three <laughs> kids, how you're doing. Let me know. Let me know. <laughs> yeah. But but it's, it comes down to the saddest part about this. What you're saying is it's not easy because it comes down to because we're not having sex as much as I think we should be having sex, we need to get a divorce. Our marriage is flawed. We have a horrible marriage. Yeah. 
And I think that comes into play. A, I mean, oh my gosh, I can, how do, how do we help all this? Okay. A, is your wife feeling safe with you? Is she comfortable with you? Does she feel respected by you? Does she feel seen, heard, loved by you? Men, yeah. you want sex more often? I'm going to give you the keys here. Here's yes. the keys, right? Help put away the laundry. Help put the kids to bed. Pour her a glass of wine. I don't know, right? Like, it, yeah. is she feeling seen, heard, and loved by you? Mm -hmm. Second, is she feel like she can communicate things with you and not just get a defensive, right? Yeah. Like I'm coming to you. I need a safe place to tell yeah. you these are my concerns or these are my, my dreams or whatever, whatever. And not have you say, well, I'm sorry, I'm not living up to those expectations. Well, I'm sorry, this isn't what you wanted. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, guys, seen, heard, love, yeah. safe place. Yeah. And then, you know, I think it'll just open up to you. I hope, I don't know. I don't have a huge men audience, so maybe that'll land on deaf ears. Maybe the wives will play this, like, in the car, like, it's specifically the right time. Mm -hmm. Oh, this just came on. Okay. Oh, Cue it up. An, yeah, what an interesting conversation. <laughs> All right. But yeah. speaking to that, I could go on and on and on. I could go on and on. You and I could just talk and talk forever. But We could. The best part of this episode was I reached out to my community, my Instagram, my Facebook community. I reached out to all of them and I said, ask me the questions, bring the questions. Rebecca is here. Let's get these answered. So these are just off the cuff. I am reading them. I believe you have them, right? Mandy sent them to you. Yes. I did. Good. I am ready to get into this. So let's just do it. Here we go. Are you ready? I am so so ready. this first one is, I had a partial hysterectomy four months ago, and my sex drive is gone. It's affecting my marriage. What can I do besides force myself to be in the mood? I think this flows right into what we were just talking about. So the hysterectomy, give yourself a year to be semi-normal. Like, Well, what about pregnancy? Is... I mean, hello? Yes. You... It is... It is so I can I can speak from experience. I had a hysterectomy. There you so, so um give yourself time and grace and if your husband is pushing then there needs to be some very clear honest communication. Your body just went through a very traumatic experience. Right? Even if like you're put under while you're having it but your body is still experiencing a traumatic experience and it needs time and space to heal. And the more we pressure it to perform, the slower the healing is because it needs time and space. So if you are the one pressuring yourself to be more in the mood, just say, hey, what does my body need right now? Because there are so many other things you can do other than intercourse. And to feel connected, valued, as though you belong, find out what you really want. Because pushing yourself to have sex before your body is ready will actually reinforce the, imp the negative impact. And your body will take longer to actually want to engage sexually. Oh, yeah. Does, does I, that make sense? Absolutely. Because that in my mind, I'm hearing yeah. you're forcing something. And so that's yeah. putting this negative like, oh, now I have to do this. Yeah. Now I got to get myself ready for this. Now I have to put myself in the mood yeah. rather than I am ready. Yeah. I am in the mood. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, yeah. That's so two different listen, feelings. listen to your body and allow your body to lead you. And being present in your body throughout the day is going to help with your libido. And this may lead into another question, but we are so disconnected from our bodies throughout the day because we're just doing all the things that we don't know if we're aroused or not, partially because we weren't raised to be aware or to shut it down, right? right? That's bad. So we just don't. And so we don't register, oh, I'm actually aroused cool how do i optimize this but instead we've been trained to push it aside but it, the more present we can be in our bodies the more arousable we will be right but 
if we have high stress lives, our cortisol levels are higher and our body is going to be in fight, flight or freeze. Thus, our reproductive organs are not going to be online saying, oh, I want to get it on and make another baby. No, I can barely survive as it is. So of course I don't want to get it on. Right. Oh my gosh. That's that goes into, I had the best conversation with, um, Hey, Hey, Elizabeth Fay. So I just recorded with her. She's amazing, but she is so into it. I said, let's, let's discuss my day versus your day. Let me walk me through a day in your life because I have a feeling they are two completely separate things. And she did, she blew my mind and she said something to the effect of, Hey, if I am, if I, if it's that time of the month, I do not schedule a thing that mm-hmm. needs to be professional, that needs to be, you know, anything, um, high stress, intense, anything. She's like, I know that that is my time that I just need to be down. She's yep. like, I, if I know I need to be, um, creative and make content and I want to be in this kind of zone, I turn on this kind of music. I dance. I you know, I get into myself. Same thing with if I, if I feel like I want to be sexual being tonight or today, I, I, she said, same thing. I take a bubble bath. I feel what my body needs from me. I listen to music. And I was just like, girl, we are living on two separate planets and I need to take a little page out of your book because that's amazing. Absolutely. And that's all she's saying. She's like, it doesn't need to take all day to do it. No. But you can give yourself 10 minutes. Anybody has 10 minutes to get into the right mindset. How yeah. do we prep ourselves to go into a marathon? Okay. So next question. Sometimes asking for sex comes out not romantic at all. Like I sound like I just... <laughs> <laughs> like let's just I love do it. it. Let's just do <laughs> it, right? I mm-hmm. want to come across as sincere as possible without coming off crass. What are some tips on how to get your husband to answer the call? This is a flip side question here because that is not a common woman problem. Normally, all I have to do is like look at my husband the wrong <laughs> way, and he's like, "Huh? <laughs> I'm ready. I'm yeah. ready." Well. It's, it's actually more common than you would think. Cool. Um, that women, ha- and you're normally mismatched. There is, there is a desire discrepancy. So rarely do you find couples that are on the same page. Right. So like stereotypically, I relate to all of our guy friends and my husband relates to the women. So cool. <laughs> and uh, so it's like, it it is it's finesse but also recognizing if our idea of romantic is what we see on movies okay let's let's actually break this down do they legit have these kids to take care of no someone threw that puke on them someone splattered them they probably got to sleep and so of course they're going to be able to act it in romance like so when i have clients come to me and and it's a couple and they're like well we want more romance I was like cool how about you tell me what your definition of romance is or and then what yours is I send them home that's your homework or I want more foreplay right and some people foreplay is a three-day process because some women it takes a lot longer to get going than others and men like, I just need five minutes before and I am I feel connected and great. But if you're both using the word foreplay, I have this definition. I've never explained it to you. I've got this definition. You asked for foreplay, I gave it to you. No, you're using two different definitions. So, of course, you're going to both be disappointed. So, circling back to this question, how to make it more romantic. Find out what romantic looks like for you as a couple. Like say, okay, if we want to have a romantic initiation, what does that look like for you? What helps you feel pursued and not just like, let's get it done, right? Right. And and one might be, I want you to come up behind me and give me a hug. I want you to be affectionate throughout the day. So it communicates like, oh, you actually desire me. It's not just to get the need met. Yeah. Right. And so it's it's incorporating things that actually make them feel as though they belong and they're desired. 
So, and that looks different for everybody. And yeah, so that, have that conversation. Like, yeah, okay. it totally goes into the love languages. I mean, absolutely. Total, we'll talk love, about love. that. Like, what's your love language? Hello. Yeah. Well, what's yeah. your foreplay language? Yes. Because if I am, um, I hate acts of service because I can do it faster than most people. So don't do that for me. I was like, hey, <laughs> you put the kids to bed. I got the kitchen. <laughs> right. <laughs> or like. He's like, oh, I'll go do this. I was like, I'll do it tomorrow, right? Because I'll get it done in 10 minutes. Right. And then I have that quality time. And so figuring out, but for him, his is acts of service. So I've got to be like, okay, what Let makes him. you feel loved? Right. Okay, you want me to do your laundry? Cool. Don't ever do mine because that's not romantic to me. But right. to him, he feels so wooed. I was like, score, I'll do yours with mine. Right. Right. It's and so, so it's, true. it's, it is a dance and it's not conceding because a lot of couples are like, well, if I give him this, then I'll never get what I want. Right. And if that's the game you're playing, then you're, you're just you've setting yourself lost. up. You've already lost. You both yeah. lost. You right? both And lost. so it is not about what can I get from you and what can you get? It is like, Oh, how do we thrive as a couple? And I chose you for a reason and I liked you. And so why would I not want to do things that make you feel loved and appreciated? Like I married you so I could have sex. Otherwise I could have not married you, right? Yeah. Like these are, these are questions that I have. So why did you get married if you're not willing to do these nice things, to have sex, to all of this and they're like oh like because you could just stay friends well and you just explained it in a way that i think people forget to remember forget to remember mm -hmm. that's an oxymoron anyway i think you forget that it because after so many years of so much different baggage mm -hmm. whatever it becomes a competition life yeah. becomes a competition mm -hmm. or i have talked about this before where you do withhold it because you think of it as a weapon or you know what i mean and it's yeah. because of a lot of those things that guess what now you need to go even back even further guess what the yeah. foreplay is not your problem the yeah. problem is back here in the communicating of you don't feel seen, heard, loved. So you, yes. He didn't take out the trash. So now you think he doesn't see you as a valuable human soul or whatever. I mean, it just. You don't um, value what I value. Yeah. So then I must mean nothing. I must mean nothing. And so, yeah, it becomes this competition. And if you are there, I'm going to tell you, you've got to go back a ways. Let's not. Sex isn't the problem right now. No. You need to go figure out the actual thing under the thing under the thing. So. And. And recognizing that marriage is not a power struggle and that you married someone more often than not, you're polar opposite, right? And that's why you married them because they cover a whole bit of territory that you are never able to. And so you get to now resource from each other, right? right? My husband's really good at some things that I'm not. It doesn't mean I don't try, but why do I try to like, make him be more like me or me be more like him because then that just gets boring and lame and less productive. And there's things I'm really good at that aren't his skill set. And so why would I want him to be like me when I've got this, he's got this and now we've got all of this. Right. And it just like, we are teammates. It's not a competition. It's not my strengths are better. It's like, Oh, we've just built a team that we can now cover so much more ground because there's two of us with two different qualities. Yeah. It's like the pull horse philosophy. Yeah. Like the one pull horse can pull X amount, but yeah. if you have two pull horses, they can pull 10 times that amount, not even yeah. double, 10 times, like insane. Yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work. Sure does. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How do I deal with being the higher drive spouse as a woman? I don't like to masturbate. I just want to be connected with my husband. Okay. So she needs more than mm -hmm. just the times that they're being intimate together. So she needs more. So that kind of stacks onto what you were saying. You got to figure out what your foreplay is because you could essentially have four days worth of foreplay 
Whereas mm -hmm. he's thinking it's the one and yeah. done or whatever. So, okay, I'll let you answer that one specifically and not my take. No, but I like, I like your take because if you're, if you have a higher desire, is it that you want to have sex or is it the connection that sex brings? Because right. there are times that we use sex as a way for quality time because I have your undivided attention. You're not on your phone. So yeah. I have it. Right. And so I'm m maybe consciously or subconsciously using sex as a way to get a need met without recognizing, oh, I just need your undivided attention. And sex is a great way. And it makes us feel good. Like sex is actually very good for us. Okay, let's have the asterisk trauma. That that's a whole nother thing. Right, right, right. Exactly. Talk through, okay. Exactly. But, yeah. Um, if you're over here on this side of the on yes. this level of the pyramid, <laughs> yes, sex is very good for you. Having an orgasm helps detoxify your body, flushes the cortisol that's excess in your body out, so then you can sleep better. Helps. It increases your pain tolerance. So if you've got back pains, migraine, anything like our bodies are designed pretty impressively. And the the orgasm for a woman, the clitoris is only for our pleasure. A man's penis is to pee, to create babies, and to orgasm. Like ours is solely pleasure, right? And so leaning into, okay, I don't want to masturbate. What do I need? And you could say, hey, I would really like an orgasm or I really want connection. How are you feeling tonight? Right. Most likely, if you're like, hey, do you want to lay here and watch me? He'll get in the mood more often than not. Like, come up with a, with a scenario that you both win and it's not a deficit on either. Don't, it's... There's a hard thing with compromising because when you compromise, you both lowered your standard, okay? But what if you said, I want you to be fully satisfied. I want you to thrive and I want you to thrive. And what does that look like for us as a couple? And it's going to be fluid. Sometimes the, the month, the year, the seasons of life, it's going to be different. Right. And so it's a continual conversation. How are we doing in our sex life? Well, I feel very satisfied right now. And then other times like, no, I, I would love it more. Okay, what do we need to do to shift this? How can I help you and how can you help me? It, it again goes back to the conversation and the communication. But because it is such a tender, vulnerable topic, it is it is exposing it's vulnerable and when we're supposed to be strong and not inconvenience our husband we're not supposed to put them out we're supposed to make their life easier and we're the ones with the higher desire like that is hard because it it does feel as though we're weaker yeah right well and, and like you said that you're putting them out and we're putting them out we are inconveniencing them and that's everything everyone in the church or the temple told us not to do don't inconvenience your husband and one of my biggest pieces of advice to just about every couple is i want you to inconvenience your spouse whether it's the husband or the wife because when you inconvenience them it creates opportunity for connection and an inconvenience is not a bad thing. It just means it's out of the ordinary. And so, hey, when I went back to school, my husband had to do a lot more around the house and with the kids. Yes, it inconvenienced him. But he was like, I'm willing to adjust. But yeah, this throws everything off because I used to not have to. Right. But it created opportunity for us to connect and to be creative together and come up with something that worked for both of us. So I didn't have to be resentful because we had a moment. Oh yeah. And you would. Right? I mean, and, and of course. Oh, gosh. I, when I started this, I had been, my husband was used to me being the stay at home mom or, yeah. or even managing and cleaning our eight vacation rentals. I had that mm -hmm. all going, but I was still a stay at home mom. I did it with my kids. So he didn't right. have to worry about anything, but then right. I'm like, Hey, I'm going to do a podcast and start a women's community. And you know, and he's like, 
uh, when he was actually really great about it, he's like, oh yeah, I'm retired. I can stay home with kids. It's great. But once he figured out that that is, it sounds cool. Sounds really cool. Until you actually do it. Was that you or me? Yeah, there's a train. Sorry. <laughs> I thought it was, well, here we have like the old towns with the cathedrals yeah. and the bells. And I'm like, oh, I didn't see that cathedral yet. Where is that? <laughs> no, it's just a train here. It's just you. It's just just you. me. I'm glad it's you. I love it. Okay. Well, also, I, I want to I specify too in that question. I don't like to masturbate. Mm -hmm. I just want to be connected with my husband. That's two very separate things. Two very different. Because, okay, you don't like to masturbate alone. Mm -hmm. What about doing it together? That, the, so that's two separate things. So I want to yeah. really say to that question, whoever wrote in that question, you need to define whether this is, you just don't like to masturbate at all. I mean, right. nothing, like no vibrators, no toys, no anything, nothing. Or like, it's all up to him. It's his responsibility. He might have something to say about that because that's a lot of responsibility. It is. That's a lot of pressure. Yeah. especially yeah. if you have a higher drive and you want it more often and it mm -hmm. has to, you have to reach climax every time for you to be satisfied. Right. And, and that's the other thing, like growing up in the purity culture, like, you know, nothing, you do nothing. And then you get married and then you're like, my sexuality is yours. Now figure me out. Like, figure me that out. is, that is a lot of pressure. Well, cause I haven't even figured me out. Right. Like, I don't and, even know how to tell you, you tell me. Yeah. And then I'm not happy because all of these are new, unfamiliar feelings and sensations that I've been told are bad. And right. so, like, I don't know where to go with this. And so he's disappointed because he's supposed to figure you out. But he wants you to participate. Right. He wants you to be in it with him. Like, it's, it's a, you know, a together thing, not yeah. just a, here I am, I'm going to lay here, figure me out. Right. Yeah. It's a it's a participation. And so when we are unwilling to figure ourselves out, that's doing a disservice to the to your sex life, to your marriage. Right. If you're not willing, but we were taught to not figure ourselves out. I just put myself in the mind of a man for a minute, too. It was glorious over there. Um, Great. No, but also maybe if it helps you to think about it in this way, listeners, ladies, mm -hmm. anybody this will connect with, if it helps you think about it in this way, how vulnerable is he feeling at this moment? How insecure yeah. is he feeling like I have to figure this out and conquer this? You're thinking like women, we're thinking this men are taught to be the man and handle it and to be tough and figure it out. Right. Whereas. They don't have all the answers. We know that, but they right. have to act like they do because society is telling them they have to figure right. it out. And I do think that 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 is a key to why the porn industry and why porn addiction has become so bad because it did open floodgates for men just wanting answers to questions that they couldn't get from their partner. And then maybe it turned into something worse because they got sucked down the rabbit hole. Right. But, but mm. I think it maybe did just start with, I need answers. And where do I get the answers? Yeah. And so if, if the man grew up purity culture or even in right. that society and they're not allowed, they don't have to be in control of their sexuality. Right. And then women are controlling because we have to control their feelings and thoughts and emotions because they can't control themselves. We get married and we fall into the stereotypical women are controlling and men don't want to be controlled. Neither do we women. Right. Yeah. And so it with porn, oftentimes it's the only place men can feel powerful or in control. Right. But we've we've been told don't be controlling, but you have to control them. And so we've got this these mixed messages and if they aren't willing to embrace their own sexuality within the context of marriage and lean in and have the vulnerable conversations of, hey, I don't know how to figure, figure you out. And my manhood is not on the line if I don't. How right. do we do this? But 
that's not what they're taught. Mm -hmm. Right. And so of course it's going to be vulnerable for them. Of course they're going to like feel rejected when we don't want to, because, Oh, does that mean I'm not attractive enough? Does that mean you don't like me anymore? Is it, I'm not man enough or we want the men to take control, but we don't let them take control because we don't like how you take control. And right. so I'm going to control everything in the house and you have to load the dishwasher like this, dress the kids like this. And now you have to take me in the bedroom, but not this way. Like we've said, we've just kind of set them up. Like we've tied their hands. Right. Right. So if we want them to take control, say, Hey, I would love for you to initiate, take control this way. And here are a few things I don't like. Right. But I am going to do my best to follow and let you. Because there's this visceral response of it's not safe, but in my mind, I want it. And so let's try to do this dance together because we both want something more and it's unfamiliar. Right. And I think you said it perfectly. It needs to be a safe place. Let's reiterate <laughs> that. That's the first mm -hmm. step. Okay, let's see. Tips to incorporating less favored positions to change up from routine. So I'm assuming the missionary has been the routine. Tips to incorporate. Well, let's hear what you have to say because I'm sure I have my own thoughts. <laughs> But I'm not the expert. <laughs> well, I would say start with the conversation and recognizing that each sex session doesn't have to be just one position. You can switch it up. And you're like, okay, so this time let's try doggy style and let's try this. And if neither of those work, we'll go back to missionary. But I also recommend trying everything three times. Okay, unless it's completely no, there's been trauma or completely heck no, never. Um, and then check in why that's the answer. But if it is new and unfamiliar, of course it's going to be like, I don't, I don't prefer this. So yeah. try everything three times. Like the first time is like, okay, this is unfamiliar. I don't know what to expect. Second time you're like, okay, I've done this before. What do I think? Right. It wasn't horrible. Cool. Third time, you're like, yes, I like it. No, I don't. Because it is now familiar or familiar enough, which creates a safe enough body feel that you can engage or disengage. You're like, okay, let's do this. Does that make sense? And so yeah. having the conversations and recognizing you're not stuck to one position for one session. And right. if it doesn't work, you have tomorrow. <laughs> like I'm a lot there's, of there's no there doesn't need to be a scarcity mindset but we often operate if this isn't epic then it's a failure like we make most of us make dinner most nights right there are some meals that we crush and you're like that was epic and we've been cooking for years right and other days you're like okay i'll never do that again it doesn't mean we quit eating yeah, doesn't mean we right? quit doing it. It doesn't like, and so you're like, okay, I won't make that one again. Or, okay, that was decent. These are the things that need tweaked. Yeah. Cool. And it's that. not like this devastating thing. It's like, oh, if I haven't done it, how on earth would I be great at it? Right. Right. And this expectation to be perfect or to be good, who determines what good is? Yeah. Like, are you connected? Are you having fun or is it all high stakes? Because if it's all high stakes, that will diminish your pleasure and the fun. Yeah. Yeah. You're setting yourself up for a fail. You are yeah. setting yourself up for a fail. Mm -hmm. You, um, I, I also, well, so what do you have your resources that you give to your clients for not going online to find different positions, but mm -hmm. do you have books that, cause hello, the Kama Sutra, whatever, but okay. You have Sorry. to be a freaking <laughs> yoga master to even yeah. attempt, or you don't, I can't even tell what most of those things. I swear I had one years ago, years ago. And I was like, ah. I yeah. need someone to tell me it's like the twister, you know, it's yeah. like right hand goes here, left hand goes here, left You're foot like, goes here. 
Yeah. So do you have new, new modern resources for someone to go and get these things so that they don't, because I, I yeah. have you don't idea go... of who would be asking these questions mm-hmm. and they are not going to go online. We don't want to encourage Great. that. No. So no, especially, yes, just don't do that. I have mm-hmm. a yes, no, maybe list that I created with 69 different things. Oh, and it starts cool. with just kissing, like what kind of kissing? Or do you like oral? What kind? Do you like to be the giver or the receiver? And it just goes down through a list of options. And I have couples do, the husband does one, the wife does one. And then they have a master copy. And then the yeses go in the box. The noes go in a box. And then the maybes, you're like, okay, it'll depend on the time of month it is, how adventurous I'm feeling, how well I slept, you know? And right. then when you're like, okay, we want to try something new, go to the list and be like, okay, what have we not done? And I like, it's written out and I give little examples. I kind of in my best, in the best with just words, no pictures, explain how to do it. Um, and it just creates opportunity because like, you know, when you go out to eat and you're like, where do you want to go? I don't know. Where do you want to go? I don't know. Okay. Then let's not do anything. Right. Like, it's getting rid of that. Like we want to try something new, but I have no idea. You have no idea. And last time you came up with something, I didn't like it. And then you felt rejected because I shut it down. (laughs) Right. And so this just like, okay, next time we want to try something, we're just going to do the first yes we have on the list that we haven't done. Um, And so things like that, that just allow you to be a little more creative and think outside the box gets like the juices flowing and you're like, Oh, next time we should do this and this, right? Because the more you're willing to try something new, the more creative you become. Right. Because you're not stuck here. But if we don't have information, if we don't have resources, I have no idea where to go. Right. Okay. Yeah. I love that. Is that something that's a free downloadable from your website? Um, no, because I am not techie, but if people go to my website, <laughs> um, I can figure out how to get it to them. So well, yes, any of the listeners, like I do offer a free 30 minute consultation and I'll send it to anybody. Cool. So cool, it is cool. free. I just don't know how to put it on my website. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I will have my <laughs> assistant help you for that. I will lend you Mandy for a day. But if you email it to me, at least I can okay. say, oh, I love anybody that. in the sisterhood, we got it. Oh, I got you. You're brilliant. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. See, that is one of my, not one of my strengths. <laughs> Anything tech. Luckily, I came here people early. out there that can do that for us. I know. I came here early to make sure I could get all of this. <laughs> You're so good. I was seriously, so, I and I've even done it, you know, so many times, but I was sitting here ready, like ready to go mm-hmm. like two minutes before. And I'm like, and I'm like, I don't even have my microphone on. Like, oh, <laughs> well, that's not going to work. Yeah. Okay. Oh, here we go. Do, oh, this is a good one because I actually, um, do I want to, yeah, I'm going to throw them under the bus. I'm not throwing them under the bus, but I don't think it really works. Okay. Do libido gummies work? I've found several different brands. I'm interested in trying those offered by a company called Mod, but not sure if they work or if it's wasted money. I am in my mid forties and could use some help to feel in the mood more easily. I enjoyed sex when I was younger, but age, motherhood, responsibility, we all know, have made it harder for me to feel the same desire I used to. This is, so I'm going to say, I am a ambassador for a company and they have one of these and it does have a caveat to it that yes you have to use it every day and after a couple weeks you would maybe start feeling the effects I'm not that kind of a person I don't want to have to take something every day to have to do this so for me it's more of a like I just explained that Elizabeth does it's you have to start thinking about it more often you have I mean set a freaking alarm that says think about sex or, yes. you know, why do, I love are great. My husband? why do I love yeah. what he does for me? Like whatever. Cause, and it starts creating the habit and your body yes. starts every time. It's like Pavlov's dog, right? And that alarm goes off. It's going to be like, Oh, I get to think about something sexy. Yes. <laughs> uh. 
It, yes. Um, for me, like, we've tried them just because people ask him. It's like, eh. Right. The, the biggest thing is why, what changed. Okay, bodies change, but are you sleeping? Are you eating foods that actually benefit your body? Are you eating? You know, because as right. moms, sometimes we forget. Right. Or we're just eating the leftovers. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not sleeping. We're not taking care of ourselves. We're not checking in with our body and what do we need. And so we just feel exhausted all the time. And if that's the case, no amount of gummies are going to fix it. Like the goal is what do I need in this new season? Because I'm not 20 anymore. I am now 40. My body doesn't recover the same way. Right. And so what, how do I create a lifestyle that helps me as an individual thrive and incorporate my sex life that actually is satisfying? Because, yeah, I tell people, I was like, set timers. I love timers. Right. I was like, and think about your husband. Okay. They're like, well, I want spontaneous sex. Well, here's the thing. What in your life are you giving up? Because you have to have time and space for spontaneity. Right. And most of us jam pack our days. And so, of course, we're not having spontaneous sex. And if we do, who's going to think about the cleanup? Are we using condoms? Are we not? Like, what about the loop? Do I need something extra? Do we need a toy? Do we need... And so, spon like, we have if we when want spontaneous, becomes... we have to have planned spontaneity. In that scenario, guess who takes care of everything? The guess woman, why so... it becomes not sexy anymore? Yes, because then we have to carry all of the weight of it. And so we have to weigh out. Is it worth the lack of sleep? Because I'm on a schedule because the kids wake up at four. Cool. Right. And now it is 930 and it's going to take me at least 40 minutes to get there. And there goes 40 minutes of sleep. And then I have to clean up because we haven't figured out the whole cleanup system. Right. Right. And so recognizing what do I need for this to work? And if you're not a night person, try afternoon sex. Yeah. Like try morning sex. Like some husbands, depending on who's a higher desire, will Come home for a lunch break. Sorry, there's a train again. Afternoon delight. Yeah, and so it's learning to work with your body, not against it. And right. the more you think about it, the more you want it. As long as it's thinking about in a positive way and not a resentful way. All my husband ever does is want it. It's like he's he's a kid asking for a cookie constantly until I finally give in. And now I'm pissed and bitter at him because he kept asking. But he's like, okay, the more I ask, it ups my chances of getting it. And he might just want to connect also. And right. so asking, okay, are you wanting sex or are you wanting to connect emotionally? Are you wanting me because we are married or are you just wanting a release? Is this a stress reliever or is this a uh, let's feel connected? Like there are so many things at play that sex gets a bad rap or a good rap for. Right. Well, I have, so I have some friends, the Studleys, and they have their own podcast and they have the anatomy of sex. And it, it blew my mind. One of the episodes mm -hmm. I was listening to and they talked about, and it didn't blow my mind because it's something I absolutely know and agree with. But my husband, for me to explain it to him, for me to explain it to him would be like, he wouldn't believe me, right? He wouldn't believe yeah. it. So I loved when they did this episode, I immediately forwarded it to him, said, listen mm -hmm. to this. And he was like, aha, the light bulb went off. And I'm like, see, just because, so I love that you talked about, is this for connection? Is this for release? Is this for yeah. what, what, it, what's the goal here? What's the end result? Because they talked about Women, when, when we just want a quickie, sometimes that's just to connect it because we yeah. know you want that and you need that. I just need a quickie. Like, yeah. I'm good. It can be just getting you off and not me so that we can connect. And, and it's fun. Our, and it's fun, yeah. It's like <laughs> sometimes I don't want to think about all the things yeah. that it's like, is my this way and I'm that way yeah. and 
uh, the kids are screaming, oh, what's going on outside this door right now? What are they doing? You know, sometimes yeah. it's just a good thing. And, and yeah. so it was funny. I really did not want to personalize this episode. <laughs> I really didn't. I was trying very hard. I'm like, you guys sending questions, then it's not about me. But it did take someone else talking about it for mm -hmm. him to, for, and me sending it saying, see, it's not just me saying that, like, you can actually believe what I'm saying. So anyway, yeah. sometimes those things happen. Okay, this one might be, uh, how many more do we have? Uh, oh, how many more do we have? You have a lot more. I do have a lot more. <laughs> okay, let's see. Mm. Okay, we'll ask this one. My husband struggled with a porn addiction before at the beginning of our marriage. We noticed early on how it interfered with his ability to finish when we would have sex. He no longer watches it and all it watches it at all and even is careful of regular movie shows that have too much nudity and sex like Game of Thrones or something like that. Um, I do find, though, that if I watch those shows, not porn, but romantic type dramas or reading the books, I'll add that, with intense love scenes, that it's easier for me to feel aroused and approach my husband for sex. Should I be concerned, though, about addiction for myself? No. You go ahead and take that one because I like I again, I'm no mm -hmm. expert. Like, why don't we just make this yeah. the Gina and Rebecca show and I'll just tell <laughs> everybody what I think. I love it because here's the thing, because it is, it's something that has inspired you and you're like, no, this is good. And so you've done your own work. And so I love it. I love all your, um, I know. So I love, yeah. I love the honesty of this question. Yes. And no, I don't think you need to be concerned about your addiction to this. We are biologically designed to be aroused by sexual things, right? And it's like thinking about our husband, like, oh, I can get aroused. So when we are watching something, reading something, we are finally letting down and being present in our body. And so of course we're going to feel things that come up, right? And so if you watch, if you watched a war movie, your body would tense up, right? If you're watching something that is talking about beautiful love and like sex scenes or whatever, like our body is designed to viscerally respond. So if you're using it instead of actually connecting with your husband, maybe check that out. But if you are using it as an opportunity to become aroused and you're not fantasizing about whoever it is instead of your husband, like way to lean into how your body is wired and to optimize. Like if your husband's not complaining and, and it is helping the connection and not hindering it, way to go. You figured something out. Like yeah. optimize. And communicate about and this communicate. something that yes. you're, that's helping you. And I think he'll give you the bravo, go ahead. We're watching it every night. <laughs> research. Well, yes. it's like anything. It's like sometimes you have a glass of wine and that's a frisky drink. Yeah. Sometimes you have a margarita and it's one of those nights, you know? Sometimes yeah. it's anything. I mean, not all that, but I books. Like sometimes you have mm -hmm. a series that you like to read and that really gets the fire going. I mean. Yeah. It's, it's the time that it's ultimately underneath all that is you actually taking time to experience something like okay. wine. Yes. Yeah, some people get frisky or a margarita. All of these things help us to relax. So then we can be present in our body. And the goal with sex is we have to be present in our body to fully appreciate and value it. And mm -hmm. so if these things help us to relax, to be able to be present and yes, communication, always like if like if you're not having these conversations with your husband he's like why are you always so horny now what's going on you're like oh nothing that could be a problem but if you're like so i found this series and he'd be like tell me more right, right? so it's it's the 
you want to keep shame and guilt out. So if yeah. you feel shame, check into that. But if it's if it's just something that you and your husband get to have a dialogue over and it benefits both of you and you come alive and experience something that you never thought of, like, way to go. That goes back to the question on what positions, too, because... If it's just kind of already there in a show you're watching and it just gave you an idea. Yeah. Two birds, guys. Two birds. Um, how, how, how are you for time? Because I'm good. But I don't want to take I've got another 15 minutes. minutes. Okay. Because I don't want to get into your, your day and cut into your day. Okay. Nope, we're not going to do that one because that seems repetitive. Hmm. I like this one. My husband is not very vanilla in the sex world. He was previously married before, so that's how he learned. But I grew up in the purity culture. How do I get my body willing to explore different positions or ideas because my mind, I think this might have said might not want to. Mm -hmm. So that's, so how do you help your clients who have a lot of I'm not even necessarily going to use the word trauma, but a lot of um, limiting beliefs from their child. So like what we were talking about, how mm -hmm. in, you know, you're raised, sex is bad, sex is bad, sex is bad. And then yeah. all of a sudden you're supposed to be just like, yay, this is great. How do you help them get past those mental blocks? So that one you want to go easy. Like as long as their spouse is for them, loves them, and is a safe enough space, right? You don't want to go, okay, now we're going to pull out the Kama Sutra and go at it, right? You want right. to like ease in, like, okay, what do we want to try? I only do missionary. Okay, cool. What if we did sideways, like we laid on our sides? Ooh, and then once you get comfortable with that and becomes familiar enough, do cowgirl. Oh, well, that's exposing because now I'm all like full of you and try that for a little bit and be like, okay, what do I like about this? What do I not? And it's, it's easing into it because you don't want to do the pendulum swing because that throws your nervous system off and it feels threatening, right? So you want to like ease your way into new things. And so, okay, if we've never done doggy style, what what about it are you against or is it scary because that's what they do in porn and so or it takes away the eye contact perfect let's go stand at the vanity and so i can still look you in the eye and you're behind me and it gives you another view and it gives me another view right and so easing into different types of things will create an opportunity to allow your body to to adjust and become familiar with it so it's not a shock to the system. Um, if there is trauma in your past, and this one doesn't sound as though there is, but yeah. this is a great one to bring that up. And you were forced to do something that you didn't want to do, or you saw porn at a young age and now that's bad and that trauma still got stuck in your body because you didn't have time or space to process it. No, we're safe. And now I'm bad because I saw something that I wasn't supposed to and I didn't try, you know, all of those things. But our body responded. And so any of those visceral body feels because we are biologically designed to physically respond to anything sexual. So if this visceral arousal response is associated with this and this was bad or shameful, my body's going to want to shut it down, right? And so if you at some point want to circle around and try it because actually it looks fun and my husband would love it and I would love to do it for him, finding a new way to do it that eases you in from a different position like okay let's let's go a blow job right if you saw it and the girl was kneeling on the ground in front of him and that traumatized you don't kneel like there are so many other ways 
to create a safe spot around that, but only when you are ready and you feel safe enough. And if you don't want his hands on your head, just say, hey, I'm going to try this. Your hands have to stay on your knees or you can put your hands on my shoulders, like articulate exactly what you want to create a safe spot for you so that you can experience what you want to experience. But right. if you try to force yourself into doing something that you're not ready for, or that's completely unfamiliar, that throws your nervous system off, it reinforces the disconnect and you'll want to protect yourself more. Does that right. answer the question? I think so. I okay. think so. And it actually brought me up wanting to talk about your book, the Sex Perspective Journal, mm. because all of this information yeah. would go really well with something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So actually, you t kind of tied it up in a bow real nice for me to just go right into that and you talking to, to us about what that is and what your hopes for that book were when you when you created it. Yeah. Um, so. Also, in that book, there's a yes, no, maybe list. Oh, So perfect. it kind of covers all of it. Um, and that doesn't come until later once you get ease into a few Ooh, more of the questions. It. But my, my goal in writing it was realizing like, oh, I have all of these belief systems around sex and sexuality. And are they helpful or hurtful? Because a lot of times we have these ideas, and we don't understand why we believe them. Well, mm -hmm. that's what the church said. That's what my parents said. That's what the pastor said or whatever. Somebody said it. And so I just blindly believed it. And mm -hmm. that belief is actually hindering me as an individual and us as a couple because I'm not allowed to talk about it. Or, right. oh, why do I think that this is dirty? Huh. Why, why can't I say vulva? That's interesting, right? And so just being able to unpack it, and the more we can ask ourselves the whys, the more comfortable we become because we, we are often defensive because we're trying to protect something. And oftentimes it's, I don't even know, so I have to protect myself, right? I feel unprepared. I, I believe that I'm not good enough. I'm all of these things. So we build these walls to protect us and we don't even know why. And so when I went to school, because I grew up purity culture and I did everything right. And my husband's the first man I held hands with, first man I kissed, first everything. And I was like, I've been bamboozled. Like right. this is Lies. What? What? So lies. <laughs> yeah. They lied to me. And so yeah. we got home from our honeymoon and on Monday was our 19 year anniversary. Um, we got home. Thank you. We got home. I was like, I've got to figure this out because if I was lied to a whole slew of others were, and I'm not okay with that. And so realizing I then went and found a very liberal college to become a sex, um, a certified sex coach because I needed information. I needed education. And then I was able to figure out where I stood and why I stand for this. Because what we don't know around sex and sexuality does hurt us, right? Because I've had people that are like, oh yeah, you can only get pregnant at night. So we're going to have sex in the morning. And they got pregnant. Like, this is, I was like, this is huh, the information. This is the information. Right. And so if we don't have it, it does backfire. And right. so I wanted to like cover the ground so that I know where I stand, why I stand here and am able to understand where other people are coming from and help them figure out where do you want to stand right. and why? Wow. I love it. I love it so much. Thank you so much for recording with me. I appreciate it. This has My been so pleasure. fun. I mean, we it could has. have gone on and on and on. We, we so really I could. I specifically had when I asked my community um, on one of our 
calls or something, I says, just throw some topics out. Like, what do we want to talk about? Like, whatever. And one was they wanted to have a whole rally call where we just talked about sex. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. After hours rally call. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so maybe we'll it. have to reach out to you and see if you want to come to that when we finally get that figured out. When we're all in the same time zone and it's not like 8 a.m. for you and it's 9 p.m. for me, right? <laughs> Perfect. I'm in. I love this. And I love what you're doing and just creating a platform for women to ask the questions, to be like, hey, I, I want more and Absolutely. I want to be confident in who I am. And what does that look like? And how do we get there? And everyone is so different. So it's not a one size fits all. Right. And it's a no judgment zone. It's no, a, yeah. guess what? That works for you. I love that for you. It doesn't work for me, but I love that for you. Yeah. Right? Yep. Thank you so much. Thank you.